Hello there, I'm Curl Painter Master Aaron Rutten, and welcome to another episode of my Digital Artist Vlog. In this episode, I'm going to talk about whether or not it's okay to trace. Ooh, it's a touchy subject there. You know what? I think it's okay to trace. I don't trace for every piece that I do, but you know what? If I want to save a little bit of time and not have to spend an extra couple hours on a sketch when I can just you know, do it digitally and just trace over it just to get the general idea for where things are at, that's fine. Because you know what? A sketch is very, very, very important. Don't forget that. It's super important because if your sketch is all jacked up, your painting is going to be all jacked up unless you want to spend a bunch of time trying to fix that. But a sketch is not a painting. And in fact, a sketch is a very, very, very tiny, tiny, tiny piece of a painting. If you add up how much time it takes to plan out the painting, and add all the shapes and all the characters and all the form and add the color and blend and finish the piece and print it and all these things. It's like sketching is like a tiny fraction of that time. It's very important, but it's not the most important thing. And a sketch isn't going to automatically equal a good looking finished piece. You could have the best sketch in the world, but if you have no idea how to paint and how to shade and how to add lighting and texture and color, you're not going to have a finished piece of artwork. You're just going to have a sketch. It's also important to note that not everything that you admire in the art world was drawn by eye or from imagination. People trace stuff all the time. People use a grid transfer method to put a grid over a photo. That way it, it transfers perfectly to their canvas. People use overhead projectors. People hold up their pencil to measure and see whether or not the corner of the mouth lines up with the corner of the eye and measure different angles. That's why you see that old French painter holding up his thumb all the time or holding up his paintbrush because he's measuring angles. Now that's not tracing, but you're using some sort of tool to aid you. You're not drawing that from imagination. You're using something to help you. Even some of the old master painters, those guys used the technology of their time, like the camera obscura and camera lucida. These were basically devices where you could look into a box and you could simultaneously see the reflection of something like a person or, or any kind of subject on a mirror projected into your eye while you can see the paper that you're drawing on and that way you could get a really super accurate sketch. It'd be just like using a projector or tracing digitally today. And that's how they got their really, really photo accurate paintings and representations of people. They didn't just do it from imagination, they used some kind of aid. Now, is it cheating to use a tool to help you to make things more accurate? I think if I were building a house, I'd want to measure things. I'd want to make sure that I'm not going to hit my head on the door frame because I just guessed and just made it whatever height I thought it needed to be. You know, I'd want my house to be upright. I wouldn't want it to be all slanted, so I'd probably use a T-square when I was measuring things to make sure they're at perfect right angles. I know if I was a farmer, I'd probably want to, you know, measure my produce when I'm selling it so I'm not just guessing and going, okay, here you go, here's 10 apples, you know? They don't do that at the grocery store. They weigh it by the pound. They use tools. The cashier, when they're checking you out, he isn't, you know, just doing all the math in his head. He's doing it on the cash register. Everything's already added up and he just takes your money. Is it cheating for you to use your GPS to figure out where you're going or to, to find a faster route for you to get to work on time? I don't know. Is that cheating? Is it cheating to use different tools to help you be more successful and to save you time? I don't think the definition of cheating really defines that whole situation there. Cheating is when you do something and you say that it was done one way when in fact it was done a different way. So if you trace something, let's say it's a really, really, really good, super detailed picture of a celebrity or something and someone says, hey, that's really cool. Did you draw that by eye from scratch without tracing? And you say, yeah, I drew it without tracing. Then that's cheating if you did draw it by tracing. But anybody who really respects your work is going to see all the other detail that you put into it and the color and achieving the likeness. So they're not really going to care if you traced it. If they're that unimpressed by you tracing, then you know what? Forget them. Who cares what they think? Plenty of other people are going to like your work and there's nothing wrong with tracing. And actually tracing is a really good way to build up your core skills as an artist because you know what? You have to have hand-eye coordination and that's really the best place to start. I think it's too easy for a lot of people to want to go to the advanced stuff and try to do super detailed three-dimensional drawings and do portraits and things. But if you don't have the basic hand-eye coordination, especially when you're working digitally, it's going to be really hard to draw because in your mind, you're going to be able to move your pen in this direction and hope that you get a certain kind of line. But if your hand is not on the same page as your eye and your brain, it's going to do something completely different and you're just going to get frustrated. So 
your eyes, your brain, your imagination, and your hand, I guess the whole rest of your body, everything has to be in sync. And the only way to build that is to draw over and over and over again. And tracing is a good way to do that because it's forcing you to do different kinds of brush strokes. It's, it's kind of like exercise in a way, you know, you're stretching and you're moving and you're doing things that you wouldn't normally do. And it's actually kind of fun because when you're tracing, you're exploring new subjects. Let, let's say you're drawing a hand, for instance, by tracing over the hand, you're going to make observations as you go along and say, okay, there's a certain amount of distance between, you know, my fingers or certain width or things are lined up in a certain way. You'll start to make these observations and tracing is a really good way to just kind of come about that naturally. So let's take a look at how to trace digitally. You could just open a photo in any digital painting program and what you want to do is you want to put that image on its own layer. I'm going to go to select all, edit, cut, edit, paste in place. That'll put it back exactly where it was and put it on its own layer. Let's call this ref, that's short for reference. And if we turn down the opacity of that layer, we can make it see through. So now we can go and we can add a new layer on top of that, pick a dark gray color, pick something like the detail oils brush or some thin brush and just trace and zoom in if you need to. I'm going to hit tab on my keyboard to make my palettes go away. And you can see I can trace this pretty accurately because I have really good hand-eye coordination. Now, if you gave this to a beginner and had them trace it, I don't know if they would get as far without having to do a lot of undos. Now, on the topic of undos, you don't want to be spending a lot of time doing a lot of undos. You just kind of want to go at it because it's just a sketch. If you need to tweak it a little bit while you're painting it or while you're working on it, or if you need to do one sketch and then do another sketch over that, and another sketch over that, and so on, that's a good way to work too. That's generally how I do it. I'll have a rough sketch and then a refined sketch and a final sketch, and then I'll start painting. You can see it forces you to go in here and make observations about things, where things are placed, how things are shaped. And sometimes it comes down to interpretation. Like if there's areas you can't see, maybe these dark areas, sometimes the reference photo isn't always going to help because there's areas that you can't make out and so you have to have some intuition there, take some artistic license. It's also up to the individual to decide what to trace because there's a lot going on in here. You know, do I want to just trace the outline or do I want to fill it in dark with shadows here on the thumb? Do I want to do it with squiggly lines? Do I want to do it with one solid thick line? Do I want to do it with thin lines, cross hatching and so on? So really this tracing process, it's really just a kind of a guide to save you time. It isn't going to guarantee that you're going to have a finished, nice looking piece of artwork or even a piece of artwork, you know, even if it is finished and it is nice looking, that doesn't mean that anybody's going to buy it or they're going to like it or they're going to appreciate it no matter how good it is. So don't even worry about the sketch, like make sure that the sketch is there and that it's doing its job and it's keeping everything accurate and in place, but don't be dependent on that sketch. And don't be dependent on tracing either because there's going to be situations where you may need to draw something and you won't be able to find a reference photo for it. Let's say you want to paint a dragon or something. You could go and you could look up examples of other people's dragons, but that's their particular style and you would be copying that. You wouldn't be able to go and find a real picture of a dragon because it doesn't exist. So you would have to use your imagination there. And finally, the most important point is that if you're using a reference photo or you're tracing over something, you should be making it your ultimate goal to make your painting look better than that reference photo. That reference photo should look like complete crap next to your painting because your painting is so much better. You've improved the lighting in your painting, you've added more to it, you've, and you've tweaked the colors, you've made it in your own unique style and it no longer looks like that reference photo. If what you're doing is basically taking a photo and then making a painting that looks exactly like a photo, good for you. You know what? That's awesome, but that's, it's art, but who gives a crap about that? Because if you're just looking at an apple that looks like a photo of an apple, you might as well be looking at a photograph. So if you're using a reference image, use it as a guide. Don't make it like the ultimate goal that you're going for when you're painting. So I hope that answers some of the controversial questions about whether or not it's okay to trace. I say it's okay to trace. Trace all you want. It's going to be really good for building your hand-eye coordination. If you found this information helpful, take a quick second to like this video and share it with your friends. 
And if you're new to my channel, click that subscribe button to get updates when I release new videos. I'll see you next Monday for another episode of my Digital Artist Vlog.